Hey, You're clapping at home. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so <laughs> excited you. to be here. Thank you, guys. Good morning, everyone. I am beyond humbled and honored to have been asked to be with you guys today. Um, this is a topic that is really heavily on all of our minds for 2020. I don't think that there's a single person in the world who hasn't felt stress this year for really, really good reasons, right? We have all of this political upheaval. We have COVID-19, which has taken over the world, and the reason that we're all socially distanced and the reason that you and I can't be in the same room today. And so I think it's really poignant that we, as we go into the fall and we start to talk about the seasons changing and the weather changing, which then brings on a lot of anxiety for some people, that we really focus on stress, okay? So I love the way that Creative Mornings has put out this information about what is stress. And there is a difference between feeling stress, which is typically rational, and then feeling anxiety. So I want you to hold on to that little nugget for the question and answer because uh, we could go into a whole lot of things about the difference between stress and anxiety. What I would like to do is really get your input this morning though. I want you to participate. I want us to create something at the beginning of this talk together. So, Livewire is going to put up a link for us. You're going to go to menti.com, and there's a code that you're going to put in that you should be able to see on your screen, okay? So I'm going to prompt you when to start putting those things in. But I want us to actually create our stress cloud this morning. You know, I have definitely been a person that has experienced a lot of stress in my life. You know, having an active duty Army husband who has deployed to combat multiple times, being a mom, going back to school as a non-traditional student, um, growing up in an environment that was um, a little bit smaller than what I would have liked and I realize now was a huge blessing. Um, there were a lot of things in my life that have caused me a lot of stress. And we're gonna talk about a couple of those things today because I really wanna hone in on how is creativity impacted by our stress? How can we learn to manage this stress that adds more stress when we can't be creative? We're all here because we feel that drive to be a creative person, right? That's why we're part of Creative Mornings. And so the one thing that becomes this wonderful coping skill and drives us and helps us feel alive is often so impacted by stress. I see people are putting in their words. I am so excited. Keep putting those in. You can put in up to three for each of you. So I'm able to see what you're putting up, and you should be able to see this word cloud as it, as it manifests too. I'm seeing anxiety, scared, overwhelmed, too much. Yep. All of those things are part of stress. So keep adding your words. I want to see those. I want those to come in. It's right here because I tend to go off on tangents. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about how stress and creativity can impact each other in two ways. I'm calling it stress two ways this morning. Okay? In October of last year, I decided that I was going to open my own therapy practice. And that caused a lot of stress. <laughs> and I think we could all agree that that would probably be rational, right? Uh, going out on your own, being a small business owner, that's a lot, that's a lot. But I was so ready for it. I was so ready and I wanted it so badly. And so what I found was I was able to be creative in that space and um, open up this business and it, it took off. It started to fly. In January of this year, I literally thought to myself over and over and over again, I'm living my best life. I even said that to people. I am living my best life. I get to be my own boss, my kids are doing well, my husband and I are doing well. And then February hit. And in February, I started experiencing some personal things that I won't go into detail because it's not important, 
but know that it weighed very heavily on my heart. And the day that things kind of started to fall apart for me, I decided I'm going to teach myself to crochet. This had never been a desire in my life. I had never wanted to crochet. I didn't think it was a thing. Like, I love music, and I love creating art, and all of these other creative things. I, but I just randomly decided crochet might be a thing that I, I want to do. So I dove deep into it. And here's what happens sometimes when we get stressed and we're highly creative, OK? We become a creativity monster. Everything is about the creation. And when I talk about everything is about the creation, I was constantly on YouTube. I was constantly at stores looking at yarn and different hooks and different patterns. And how can I put this yarn together with this pattern to make it look fabulous? And I don't want my crochet to look like something from the 60s. So I had to make sure it looks modern and clean and all of these things were constantly ruminating in my thoughts. Much like someone put scattered productivity. Ooh, interesting for stress. Yes. Loss of control. That is something that I was feeling. But I was feeling loss of control in my creativity. What I thought was this amazing coping skill literally became a monster. I have so much yarn in my house right now and so many unfinished projects, it's not even funny. And I like to finish things. But I quickly became aware that um, this was a way for me not to cope. This was a way for me to numb. I wasn't handling my business. I wasn't taking care of the thing that was actually causing me stress. It looked like I was. To anybody looking at me, they would have thought, oh my gosh, Emily, you are handling this so well. I was falling apart. I was falling apart emotionally. My heart hurt. And the only thing I knew how to do was come home every night and sit on my couch and do this. My whole body tensed. I was doing yoga poses and seeing my massage therapist because of the literal bodily tension that I was feeling because of my creativity. What I also found was that I lost a piece of my creativity. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit, in a little bit bed in a minute, whatever. It's Friday morning, right? <laughs> I get a five for that, right? So what do we do when our creativity becomes the monster? Well, the short answer to that that I would like to say to you is handle your business. Sometimes self-care is not your bubble baths and your face mask, which we are going to talk about, and they have their place, and I want you to use them. Sometimes self-care is literally handling your business getting down into the nitty-gritty of it, getting into the dirt, feeling the discomfort, and learning how to manage it. A tip that I would say to you today is learn how to say no. Manage your boundaries. And we could talk about this for hours. We could talk about how to manage your boundaries and uh, what different boundaries look like. Backache. Does that say backache? Oh, headache. Headache, yes. I can't tell you how many headaches I've had this year. Blew. Should have bought stock in Motrin. That's for sure. Someone put people. People. That's a really good segue for boundaries, right? That goes really well with the boundary piece. Saying no. And sometimes saying no means saying no to your creativity. If that means that you say, okay, today, I'm going to give myself a limit. I'm going to give myself the limit of I get one hour to make music. I get one hour to create art. 
I get one hour to develop a business plan because creativity isn't always about artistry. I give myself one hour. And then as you learn to balance, as you learn to say, here's my coping time, you're literally setting aside your time for coping and giving yourself grace within that time period to say, I don't have to think about all of these things. Because sometimes what happens when we numb, even if we're sitting there playing a video game or we're sitting at the piano playing music, all of that stuff's in the back of our minds, right? So if you're giving yourself that balance, that boundary to say, this is my stress time and this is my coping time, you get to move into that coping time knowing that you have handled your business, okay? Um, please keep thinking about questions and answers because I could talk about this forever. <laughs> or or cute, you know what I mean, Fridays, right? Not in the stomach, money immobilized. I see you and I hear you. Because that's what happened to me later this year. So February, things started to fall apart for me. My business was great. Um, if there's anything that I can say about 2020, it has been a fantastic year for me business-wise. I could not be prouder of myself, which is really hard to say, um, and so glad for the support system that I've had. Especially as we moved into April. Um, by April, I was doing all of my um, therapy sessions online. Um, COVID was really in the forefront. Um, we're doing telehealth. Personally, I'm doing a little bit better, not real great. So April was kind of a blur. And then May 5th, I was diagnosed with cervical cancer. If I thought I was feeling stressed before, I had no idea what stress was. Um, it completely halted my life, as it does for most people who are diagnosed with cancer. Um, I ended up having to take three weeks off of work, which to me felt like a failure. I was abandoning the people who needed me. Even though I know logically that in order to take care of them, I have to take care of myself. I have to be healthy. I knew that. What happened to my creativity was I went from 90 miles an hour to nothing. I had nothing left. Um, singing and music has always been, ooh, I wasn't going to get emotional today. <laughs> singing and music has always been my go-to. When I was... Um, a teenager, I would often take my boombox to our barn and I would blare the music and I would sing at the top of my lungs. That was my stress release. That was my coping. That's what got the knots out of my stomach. That's what helped my headache go away. I know now because I was taking in so much oxygen from singing. I couldn't do it anymore. From the month of June until the beginning of August, I didn't sing once. Not only did I not sing, I didn't even really listen to music. I stopped crocheting, which is how the project started to build up. And this is how stress impacts our creativity in the second way. We completely lose it. We become so overwhelmed by the weight of the world on our shoulders that we can't even imagine what it feels like to be creative anymore. There's no room, there's no space. It is a physical manifestation in our bodies of everything that's going on. 
I didn't have the emotional space. I didn't have the physical space, especially when I started radiation treatment. I slept most of the time. So how do we combat that? I'm going to give you a few ways. Because the way that stress manifests in our body, as Creative Morning is so wonderfully put out, is it becomes somatic, meaning we literally feel it everywhere in our bodies. We feel it in our heads with a headache. We feel it in our abdomen with knots in our stomach. We feel it in our hands from clenching. I feel it in my calf muscles because as my husband likes to make fun of me, I sit like a crow on a branch with my toes curled under, when I, especially when I'm super stressed. So what do we do about that? This is what I urge my clients to do. Meet your body where it's at. Meet your body where it's at. Sometimes it gets so overwhelming and we're like, oh, it's, it's all in my head. It's all in my head. Like, I, you know, I shouldn't be this stressed. Oh, the shoulds. They get me every time. What I say to my clients all the time is, nope, that doesn't belong in this office. We drop kick it out of here. Nope, we don't say the word should. We don't say the word should. We don't say the word need. It would be helpful if you got up off the couch today and paid your bills. That would be really helpful. And there will be consequences if you don't. It would be helpful if you said no to your employer for this other thing that they're asking you to do, on top of a million other things that you're already doing. So let's just take all of that out of the picture, right? Let's forget that everyone's going to tell you it's all in your head and you shouldn't be stressed. You shouldn't feel the way that you're feeling. Guess what? You are literally feeling it. In every part of your body, you are literally feeling it. So let's meet your body where it's at, okay? So the number one thing that I coach my clients through is progressive muscle relaxation. And if we had time, I would love to take you through one together. But there are a ton of progressive muscle relaxation videos on YouTube. And, you know, I really encourage people to find out which ones work for them. I can tell you my favorites, but my favorites won't be your favorites. So, progressive muscle relaxation, I'll tell you a little bit about it. It's the idea that um, our bodies sometimes need a little help to actually relax. I can't tell you how many clients I have come into my office and they're like, ooh, this couch is comfortable. It's so nice and relaxing. And then we do progressive muscle relaxation and they're like, oh, that's relaxed. Can I take a nap now? And then I had to tell them nap therapy is not a thing. And I wish it was. <laughs> because I've napped in my office before. Between clients, don't worry, I'm not napping during session. But I do have a comfortable couch. I have a very comfortable couch. So progressive muscle relaxation is the idea is that our body needs help to actually relax. And so what you do is you start from the tips of your toes and you actually work all the way to the top of your head, okay? And you're, you're working progressively through your toes, your calves, your thighs, your butt, your stomach, your chest, your arms and shoulders. And you're actually walking your body through the process of tension and relaxation. And I can't tell you how many times I have had some really uptight clients, including myself, think that they are relaxed, it's me especially before bed, and then they do progressive muscle relaxation, and they're like, oh, this is what this feels like. Yes, this is what this feels like. The other thing that I really like to encourage people to try is meditation. Meditation is fantastic for a brain dump, okay? Because what happens with stress is we get all this stuff running around in our heads, and it feels almost like you have nowhere to put it, right? With meditation, you get to dump it. You get to clear your mind. 
well, what's that going to help me do, Emily? Well, that's going to help with the headache. That's going to help with the muscle tension. That's going to help with the knots in your stomach. All of those things. And meditation is not for everybody, but it's a tool. It's a tool that we can use. And again, there are tons of meditations out there. I'm going to talk a little bit at the end about someone that I really enjoy um, for a couple of these different things, too. And she's a fantastic resource. Okay? Um, the other thing that I like to do is um, mindfulness. So mindfulness and meditation can be married together. All right? But one of the things that happens with stress is we become hyper-focused, and everything feels like this. Now, I'm from Kentucky, and I love horses, so I'm going to use a racehorse example. If you've ever seen horses at the track, not all of them, but some of them have blinders, okay? And this is so they can't see. Literally, they cannot see the other horses on the other sides of them because it distracts them, all right? So these horses have these blinders on so they can only see what's right in front of them. Horses have eyes on the sides of their faces. This is so they can watch for predators, all right? So they need the jockeys and the trainers and the managers and all of the millions of other people that work with the horse need the horse to see straight in front of them to the goal. That works for you if there's a predator. Often with stress, the only predator is ourselves. But we still get the blinders. We still get the blinders on. We got to take those off. So mindfulness is about bringing your senses into the now. How can I incorporate my five senses? There's more than five senses, but we're going to go with five for today. Okay? How can I incorporate my five senses into the now so that I can be mindful of where I'm at in the moment? You can do this with anything. Anything. You can be mindful brushing your teeth. How does the brush feel in my hand? How does the brush feel on my teeth? What are the sensations that I'm feeling? What am I tasting? What am I smelling? What am I hearing? And what that does is it brings your focus into the now. Instead of it being about all of these mountains of things that are stressing you out, it becomes purely about the sensation and it becomes about experiencing your body. You can mindfully eat. I do this in my office all the time. I keep fruit snacks, I keep Nutrigrain bars just to teach clients how to do this, okay? What does the packaging feel like? What does it smell like? What does it sound like when you're chewing? What does it taste like? Really allow yourself to taste it. Something that happens a lot with stress is we fog eat, right? That moment when you grab the bag of chips and you're just like, we don't really taste it. So allowing yourself the space to go, this is salty, this is sweet, this is crunchy, this is mushy. Right? It brings the focus back in to the now. And you can be mindful and meditate at the same time. Those things can go together. The third thing that I have become a huge fan of this year is hypnotherapy. Hypnotherapy and traditional therapy or psychotherapy can ab absolutely work hand in hand. I would not have made it through this year this far if it was not for my therapist and my hypnotherapist because they, they work simultaneously together. There's absolutely a place for talk therapy, and there's absolutely a place for hypnotherapy. And I love hypnotherapy because it puts you in this state of very relaxation, and it allows you to rebuild neural pathways in your brain. It allows you to experience things in a different way. It allows you to brain dump, just like meditation does. And what a lovely thing to do, to be able to dump all that stuff out of our brains. So, it is now August 29th. 29th. Uh, we're going into September. Pumpkin stuff is out. I am out of radiation and in remission. And what has happened to my creativity now? One, I'm here with you guys today. I received the email to join Creative Mornings for this talk um, right before my last few sessions of radiation. 
And I really have to credit that email with bringing back a little bit of that spark for me. I am literally leaving here today and um, going to my office and packing it up and moving to a bigger office. An office that holds enough space for all of the creativity. One of the things that happened during this space of time when I couldn't be creative was I, I had a little bit of a business identity crisis. The name of my business is Creative Spirit Counseling. How can I live up to that when I don't feel creative? This is my brand. This is what people expect from me. And I had no space for it, literally or figuratively. So I'm moving to a bigger space to allow myself to be creative with my clients, to allow my clients space to embrace their creativity. I am crocheting again, and I have about three new projects on my table. Kelly, I promise I will get your blanket done. It's almost there. And I'm singing again. All of the things that I have talked with you about today, all of the tips and tricks that I've thrown out to you today are all things that I employed myself. I have to be able to put my money where, where my mouth is. And um, I definitely have learned that this year. These things work. Sometimes it requires help. You need a good support system. Learn how to say no. Set your boundaries. And then treat your body well. Meet your body where it is. Take care of it. It's the only one you've got. So, that being said, sometimes stress becomes so overwhelming that we really can't do it alone. We need help. So I'm going to tell you three places that you can get a little bit extra support. The first is through Creative Spirit Counseling. We're actually going to put these up on the screen. But the first is through Creative Spirit Counseling. Um, I am not an art therapist. I'm not a, a registered art therapist. Creativity at Creative Spirit Counseling means I meet you where you're at. I have clients that are musicians. I have clients that are artists. And I have clients that say they have no creativity at all, which I argue with. <laughs> but creativity at Creative Spirit Counseling means you're not going to come in and sit down and we're just going to sit and I'm going to go, mm, yeah, tell me more. I mean, I'm going to do that sometimes, truthfully. But it's really about me engaging with you and developing a relationship together. How can you and I co-create a better life? What can I do to be creative in session to help you in the way that you learn, the way you think, the way you visualize? Because I'm a visual person. What can I do? How, what cues from you can I use to then help you create lasting change? That's what Creative Spirit Counseling is about. The second person that I would really love to give a big plug to is Ashley Stilo with Inner Canvas Counseling. Ashley Stilo is a registered art therapist, and she is one of the most genuine and kindest souls I've ever met. If you are looking for somebody for therapy, that is really going to hone in on, on the, that artistic ability um, and help you find new ways of being creative and having artistry while healing. Ashley is an amazing clinician. I can't say enough good things about her. The third person that I would really like to plug is Andrea Parody. Andrea does a lot of different things. She does body work, she does energy work, reflexology, yoga, and uh, hypnotherapy. Yes, she's my hypnotherapist. Oh, yeah, music. Um, <laughs> I don't mind. Like, we can play music. That's fine. Um, but Andrea is amazing, and um, she is somebody that I have seen both through my cancer journey, and I have actually attended her classes before, um, before my cancer journey. And um, she is an amazing person. She is so intuitive and she makes you feel so comfortable and helpful. So if you're looking for 
um, another avenue of being able to create some change and de-stress and mind dump and feel whole in your body, then Andrea is your person.